can't get anywhere in the building, but none of my cars work anymore. I got a deal for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a power car. You may need that. You, you can have it. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you for being here and for those who are watching versus the web. In a moment, the chiefs and I will provide an update on yesterday's demonstrations and, conver and conversations the city has had and actions we are taking. Uh, we will also describe what we are going to be doing on the COVID front with testing. But as long as we have these city updates, I also want to start by remembering why we are here. Last week, George Floyd was murdered by police officers in Minneapolis. Those officers have rightfully been charged, but justice has yet to be done. George Floyd was a son a father, a partner, a brother, an uncle, he should be alive today. His murder is the latest example of the racism that permeates every institution our, in our country and reminds us all of the work that is left to be done. Today also happens to be Breonna Taylor's birthday. She would have turned 27. She was shot eight times by police in her home in Louisville in the middle of the night. It has been nearly three months since she has been killed, and there's been no justice. Yesterday, we learned that Manuel Ellis, a 33-year-old black man in Tacoma, was killed by police. Tacoma Mayor Victoria Woodards has directed the police officers involved be fired. I've spoken with her, support her, and wholeheartedly support her actions. Over the last week, thousands across Seattle have come together to raise their voices, share their anger and grief, and to demand justice, not just for George Floyd or Breonna Taylor, but for all of those who have lost their lives before them. I am thankful for these demonstrators for sharing their voices, for demanding more from all of us in a position of power, including myself and the Chief of Police. I want to talk a little bit about last night. Yesterday, thousands gathered, marched, and protested into the very early morning hours. Chief Bess and SPD have tried to make operational adjustments every day to allow those peacefully gathered to march across the city and to gather in Capitol Hill. I want to express again my deep thanks to the protesters and community activists who've showed again the power of peaceful collective action. That must remain the goal for both those who want to speak out by coming together and for our police department. I have every confidence that we continue another night of peace, but with robust protest, demonstrations, marches, and a raising of the voices of this community. Every night, Chief Bust has worked, to, worked with her commanders and officers to adjust their approach, like moving the barriers so there's more room to spread out creating more distance between officers and demonstrators, communicating more with the crowds and relying on help from those who are there peacefully to stopping some who might throw rocks or take other actions that aren't peaceful. We need more dialogue between officers and protesters. We need more communication on the front lines. So Chief Best is making continued adjustments and we are evaluating how we can formalize more de-escalation teams on both sides to create better communication. In the early morning, there was one situation that could have escalated quickly when a small incendiary device of some sort was set off in the crowd. I will let the chief discuss this incident more. But ultimately, it did not lead to the escalation. I believe Seattle can continue to protest peacefully. There's been a lot of concerns raised about both individual use of forces and the Seattle Police Department's crowd control policies, procedures, and actions. I share those concerns. As I told you earlier this week, after viewing the events of Sunday night and the pink umbrella video, I requested and was able to meet Tuesday morning with the Office of Police Accountability and the Office of Inspector General. These two independent offices are critical to our police accountability. I asked them to review the individual actions of officers 
and the overall crowd management actions and provide me and the chief with any immediate changes we could make and any systematic recommendations that they had. I also spoke to Patty Hayes and Dr. Jeff Duchin on Wednesday to ask for their recommendations on steps SPD could take given the public health concerns of COVID-19 and ensure the city had clear recommendations on the impacts of COVID-19. Because of SPD's adjustments and better communication with demonstrators and because demonstrators have come by the thousands, raised their voices, but been, been peaceful, because of SPD's actions, tear gas has not been used since earlier this week. But it's critical that this is addressed by policy and the chief's direction. I appreciate the urgency for a quick recommendation from our accountability partners and our public health partners. While we get their review, Chief Best has ordered, and I agree, she will immediately issue a directive to her officers banning the use of tear gas for 30 days in any of these protests. I will let Chief Best discuss the policy change with you. In conversations with the Chiefs, I know she agrees that SPD officers do not need to be using tear gas at protests as a crowd management tool. In 2017, the City of Seattle submitted a crowd management plan to the court as part of the consent decree process. This was after my time as U.S. Attorney and before my time here as Mayor. It was reviewed at that time by our accountability partners, the court monitor, the Department of Justice, and was approved by the court. Understanding that we have seen continued acts of police violence and a failure to de-escalate both at home and nationwide, I will be asking the city to work with the Office of Police Accountability, the Inspector General, the Community Police Commission, the Seattle Police Department, and the Federal Court Monitor to immediately review our crowd management plan and in the next 30 days return recommendations. This review should better emphasize de-escalation tactics and should incorporate recommendations from our accountability partners on the use of any crowd control techniques, including the use of tear gas and flashbangs. We'll also ask them to engage a range of community and national experts to find innovative solutions to de-escalating large crowd events. Simple things can help. I said yesterday that it was, was uh, suggested to the chief they put in a better sound system so that the crowds could clearly hear from the police. We put that in yesterday at the direction of Chief Best and she and her officers heard back from people that it made things better because they understood what was going on. Some community leaders that I have met with have suggested that we create de-escalation teams um, for community demonstrations. These would involve people taken from the community, trained in de-escalation, and having the responsibility to provide that communication and de-escalation between police and the people demonstrating. I would like that to be one of the ideas that the CPC and our other accountability partners review during this review. We also have to remember we still are in a nationwide pandemic. We have to remember that COVID-19 is still a very real threat to our community and to every demonstrator who is out there, it provides an actual threat to their health. Yesterday, I announced that the city's new partnership with the University of Washington Medicine will provide free citywide testing. We now have the capacity to test 1,600 individuals each day with sites in North and South Seattle. Currently, the King County Public Health guidelines around testing would usually only test someone who is showing symptoms or those who have been close contact with someone who is uh, COVID-19 positive. But I've also heard concerns from individuals who've been attending these demonstrations that they would like to be tested. I will have more to share with you later today, but we will be updating our MOU with King County Public Health to allow everyone who is participating in these demonstrations to be tested at our city sites, regardless of whether they are exhibiting symptoms or not. Again, this will be free. We've also asked King County Public Health and the public health system to make sure that anyone who is demonstrating who gets tested knows and we have 
mechanisms in place in the public health system that that information will be kept confidential. Again, please go to www.seattle.gov slash COVID-19 testing and you can sign up for a test. We are rapidly trying to ramp up our testing capacity here in Seattle and we need to ensure that all those who are demonstrating are eligible to immediately get tested for COVID-19. I want to take a moment before turning this over to Chief Best to express my continued admiration and gratitude for the work that she is doing. She has led this department through this unprecedented moment with the level of grace, restraint, and resolve that I think is unmatched. She came up through this department and cares deeply about it, but she is also from this community and feels the pain that so many of us feel. She's not just a model for her officers, she's a model for police chiefs across this country. Seattle is really fortunate to have her leadership. We're also very fortunate to have the leadership of Chief Scoggins, who has led in so many ways, not just on fire department's response to these demonstrations, but also on our response to the COVID-19 threat. Before I pass it to Chief Best, I wanna implore everyone again Continue, continue making your voices heard, but please do so in a safe and peaceful way. As I have reiterated, we're looking in this pandemic, we all must look out for each other's health and safety. There's never been a time when your voices have been more important to your country, to your city, and to your community. We need you now more than ever. Speak up, but please be safe. Chief Best. Thank you, Mayor, and good afternoon. I would like to begin, as we do every day, by acknowledging and remembering why we are here today for the tragic murder of George Floyd. People across the nation and within our own community continue to come together to peacefully demonstrate and express their grief and their anger and their frustration. Wednesday night on Capitol Hill, I met with many of the demonstrators we shared peaceful dialogue. We talked about healing, reform, and moving forward together as a community. Unfortunately, uh, last night, uh, that peace did not continue for the whole evening. Uh, in the wee hours of the morning, um, there was an issue where there were uh, people who were throwing bottles and rocks and projectiles at officers and we had two officers injured and one required treatment at the hospital. As I have said throughout the week and really for my entire life but certainly throughout the last week we have to meet peace with peace and last night in the face of the rocks and bottles and projectiles your police officers demonstrated restraint and they didn't use any force. The community needs to know that as your police chief, I will speak out and I will condemn officers who abuse their power and I will hold them accountable. But I will also speak up and support the officers who are doing the right thing. Officers have been working tirelessly for the last seven days and not just at the demonstrations, in fact, um, the federal task force that we're a part of made the first arrest in connection with the riot last Saturday. Task force uh, continued to investigate all the criminal incidents that occurred that day. We're sifting through a lot of information and the tips that people are sending in and the information that we're gathering to hold people accountable who were uh, lighting cars on fire and looting and um, committing property destruction and damage. You know, that's true. We're just still answering 911 calls every day to the tune of about 12 to 1300 calls a day, helping victims and providing a high level of public safety that our community not only expects, but deserves. Additionally, as the mayor has already highlighted, today I issued the order to suspend the use of CS or what other people may call tear gas for crowd management purposes. After hearing concerns about the use of CS gas for crowd control purposes earlier this week, 
Uh, I met with my command team. We discussed and talked about future uses, and we decided that we were going to suspend, temporarily suspend, the use of CS gas for 30 days. And during that 30-day time period, we've asked the accountability partners, uh, the Office of Police Accountability, Director Andrew Meyerberg, the Office of Inspector General, uh, Lisa Judge, and the Community Police Commission under Bessie Scott, along with other outside experts, to review and update the department's crowd control policies. And during that time, the Seattle Police Department SWAT team will maintain their trained ability to use uh, CS to protect life and to end standoff situations. Any deployment must be approved by the chief or designated by, uh, by the deputy chief or whoever I've des designated. It is important to note that there is no incident on record since the WTO protests in 1999 when the Seattle Police Department deployed CS gas for crowd management circumstances, as we had to do on May 30th. Other options on that day for crowd control, such as blast balls and OC spray, simply were not proving effective at that time. And because of the magnitude of the event, we experienced a near depletion of its supply of those tools. Accordingly, uh, SPD temporarily authorized the use of CS in order to prevent further destruction. Many of you saw the pictures and the photographs and the news coverage of the destruction that occurred downtown that day. Um, the conditions that have now been met and things, we have our resources back in place and that authorization has been rescinded. SPD remains committed to the mission of managing demonstrations and managing events where no crowd control to tools need to be used. But we also must protect the life and the property of this great city. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to Chief Scoggins. Good afternoon. My name is Harold Scoggins, Fire Chief of the Seattle Fire Department. Remembering George Floyd, that's why we're here. But I'm, I'm glad our mayor um, reminded us that it's Brianna Taylor's birthday. Um, if you didn't know, she was an EMT serving her community. So she would have been on the front lines serving her community during the course of this pandemic, responding to patients in need. So she also has a special place um, in my heart as a first responder. Over the course of the last 24 hours, the Seattle Fire Department responded to 12 emergencies uh, related to the, the protest that was navigating its way around the community. Um, eight were medical and four were fire related. One of the fire related um, responses were particularly important because it was a group trying to s start a small uh, bonfire in Cal Anderson Park. So once again, I do want to remind the protesters that you know, if these things happen and you see people doing these things, please call 911. It's important that we get there and we keep small fires small. That's very important. Also, while you're protesting, if you see your neighbors having a harder, hard time, uh, maybe they're dehydrated, maybe they haven't eaten, maybe they have an underlying medical condition, and they go down and need assistance, please call 911. And please stay there with them to help us get to where they are. That's very important. And as the mayor mentioned this morning, we opened our, our community testing clinic, our, our SOTO location. Um, and, and you can sign up for testing at seattle.gov forward slash COVID-19 testing. And it is open and I, I, can, I can testify to that because I was customer number one this morning. Um, so we're ready for you. You know, um, you're, you're traveling around the community with large crowds of people that you probably don't know. And it's important that you recognize that because you don't know who they're coming into contact with and they don't know who you're coming into contact with. And when you leave the protest, you're probably going back home to family and friends and you're probably taking some things with you did, that you didn't start the day off with. So my advice to all of you is to go get tested. My advice to all of our healthcare workers is to go get tested. As our community starts to reopen and you wanna have that confidence level, we're asking you to go get tested. So once again, seattle.gov forward slash COVID-19 testing. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Two things I want to address and then open up for Q&A. The first is, I again want to thank the Chief for all the work he's done on testing um, in this pandemic. Remind people that he was the, f that our first responders were the first to set up a 
a testing facility for first responders by first responders, and they've now tested hundreds of first responders. They then use that mobile team to also test in our senior centers. So truly do want to urge people, get tested at our sites. You won't have to pay anything. It's important that you know what the status of your health is. The second is, I want to also say that it, re relating to the, the, the killing in Tacoma, um, Mayor Woodards and I both support and will be asking for a new state authority that there be an independent special prosecutor office created solely to investigate and prosecute on those law enforcement cases or people who are uh, in other uh, color of law, they call it, so a jail guard or the like. We know there's too many conflicts of interest when those cases are investigated and prosecuted by the local authorities who rely on those same police departments. So she and I and some others will be sending a letter to the governor asking for in the next session, and particularly if there's a special session, the creation of an office of a special investigation for such cases. Um, and with that, I will take any questions for myself or for either of the chiefs. is for Chief Best. Uh, Chief, the question has come up immediately, why just a ban for 30 days? And secondarily, the Minneapolis City Council has just approved a ban on chokeholds and neck restraints by police officers. Is that something you support here? Hi, Chris. Thank you for your question. Uh, we wanted to have the time to make sure we review and analyze all of our practices and policies under crowd control. As you know, and the mayor mentioned, in 2017, uh, our crowd control policies and practices uh, received a thorough review and were filed in federal court. But we do know, as we look for continuous improvement and innovation and keeping up with the times as things evolve, that a consistent review is very important. So we want to allow, uh, we don't want to act rashly, we want to make sure that we allow the time for the accountability partners uh, to take a look at all of those uh, processes and give us the most well-informed uh, advice on what we should do going forward. In the meantime, it is only um, specialized, trained SWAT personnel and only in situations where there is a life safety issue uh, that we will uh, consider the use of a CS gas and only then if I approve it. So I'm taking full ownership of that interim time frame to make sure that we're doing the right thing, but our mission is always a life safety, you know, making sure we protect property and incident stabilization. And we don't want to remove that tool wholly across the organization without having a full and thorough review by our competent uh, and well-regarded accountability partners. Uh, in terms of neck holds and choke holds, in this organization, uh, they are that is the equivalent to deadly a deadly force situation. We are always, as I mentioned earlier, continually reviewing viewing all of our policies and practices and procedures. And as these issues are raised uh, and these issues come to light and come to bear in other areas of the country, we review our policies and practices here. And I can assure you we'll, we'll be reviewing that as well. So thank you for asking. Could you say restate the first part of your question? It got lost and I just heard the Pike Pine part of it. Sure, sure, sure. So I'm thinking about the Occupy camps from Broadway in 2011. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the resources that might be put in place around uh, the East Precinct besides policing that might help with the protesting and keeping that place safe? Yeah, thank you for that question. We have been. Um Obviously, the uh, Chief Best and the Police Department are taking the lead on making it safe for police officers and securing the precinct. But that community, even through this last week, has been um, pretty heavily used, and there's been both damage and impacts on the residents and businesses there. So across the city, we are mobilizing all of the city departments to do work 
Um, we are, the Seattle, Seattle Public Utilities is cleaning those areas um, almost every night after the protest. We're working with businesses to see what supports they need. We're managing uh, trash collection. We're also looking, and Department of Neighborhoods is in and working with Department, uh, with neighborhood community groups to see what additional things they need. Um, one thing we haven't talked about yet is uh, the state has approved Seattle moving to 1.5. And so we will be seeing additional ways that restaurants can operate. And Capitol Hill has a lot of restaurants in that area. So we're reaching out to our small businesses, you know, restaurants, bookstores, and the like on Capitol Hill to see what we can do to support them through this next stage in the pandemic. And it's going to be even more complicated given that these demonstrators are there every night uh, using the neighborhood very heavily. So we're looking at all those resources and, and we'll take this opportunity that if there's any residents, community members, businesses that have seen particular impacts that they need help from the city, please let us know. And you can email me directly at jenny.durkin at seattle.gov. Thank you, Mayor. Our next question will be from Patrick Quinn, Como 4, followed by Carolyn Vick, South Seattle and Patrick, the floor is yours. Uh, my question is for the mayor or Chief Best. Uh, so I was a first responder driving by. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I know another one of your accountability partners also requested to put a hold on those blast balls or flashbangs um, for some of the same reasons, maybe uh, uh, better protocols or outlining in the SPD handbook when they're used. Why allow those to continue? Or was there talk to put a stop on flashbangs, blast balls? I have not seen that request, and I'm going to let Chief Best um, answer, but I will make clear when I met with um, the OIG and OPA first thing Monday morning, I asked them to review all of our crowd control policies, procedures, and techniques. Um, and in this next 30 days, we, that's what we want them to do. I also want to clarify, uh, based on Chris's question, uh, it is at least 30 days if our accountability partners through this come back to the chief and say we need more time then that prohibition will stay in place it will not be lifted until we get that recommendations from uh, our accountability partners and the court monitor chief do you want to address the blast balls yeah, yeah, like the mayor mentioned, um, I hadn't heard that. So I will so tell you this, though. For every policy that we have in our organization, we consistently review uh, every policy to make sure we're implementing best practices, that we're utilizing policies appropriately. Um, it's part of our mission for continuous improvement, examination, and innovation as we move forward as an organization. So I can assure you that those policies will be, will be reviewed. And certainly, if there's an additional request, We'll be looking at that as well. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Chief. Our next question will be from Carolyn Vick, South Seattle Emerald, followed by Heidi Gruber, Seattle Times. Carolyn, the floor is yours. Thanks so much. Uh, yes, this question is for either Mayor Durkin or Chief Best. There were multiple on the ground reports on Thursday night of officers not only turning off body cameras, but removing their badges altogether. Have you heard these reports? And if so, how do you plan to address them? Hi, Carolyn. No, I have not heard anything uh, such as that. Um, I've been out routinely uh, on the line and with the officers. Um, I haven't seen that occur, and nor have I heard of any instance of that. One of the things that we have to be um, careful about is making sure that as we hear rumors, uh, that we evaluate them uh, and make sure that there's any, if there's any supporting evidence of that that we're following up. I have not seen or heard of that at all. I'm going to follow just briefly, and thanks for raising that question. I think that um, I have not heard those specific things. I know there's been a number of issues raised by demonstrators, and if those are the case, would urge people to make sure that they uh, file a complaint with the OPA so that it can be reviewed. Mm -hmm. We will not allow for any officer to be violating the rules, policies, and procedures that are in place at any time, but particularly this time. I also want to address the body-worn video. Um, as we've discussed before, the body wound video policy was put in place uh, by the previous mayor and council after consultation with civil liberty groups and the like that did not want peaceful protests being video recorded uh, by the police. 
I think those civil liberty concerns are still valid, but I think that we've changed as a city and people's expectations have changed. SPD is ready to turn those cameras on, but I'm going to be asking the city council, working together with the CPC, our civil liberties groups, and other stakeholders to take a look at that policy and determine whether it needs to be updated. If they decide that it does, we're ready to turn them on, um, but I want to leave that work to the community, the very, very uh, thorough community work that was done before. Thank you, Chief, and thank you, Mayor. Our next question will be from Heidi Gruber, Seattle Times, followed by Kevin Schofield, SCC Insight. Heidi, the floor is yours. Hi, this question is from Chief Best. Um, is pepper spray still allowed under this policy and um, given the, the impacts that that can have on the people who are sprayed, do you have concerns about COVID-19 um, with pepper spray? And can you confirm both pepper spray and tear gas were used on Capitol Hill Monday night? Yeah, there was this whole um, event. So I can't remember which night of, of everything you so I'm sorry I can't answer that directly right now, but happy to talk to you offline about it. Um, what this suspension is of CS gas uh, for right now, but everything will be reviewed. Uh, and it's really important that, again, that we're looking at every um, aspect of force and how we're utilizing it. So we'll review everything that we're utilizing. We'll wait to hear the recommendations um, in 30 days or so from our accountability partners. Certainly, as the mayor mentioned, if there needs to be an extension, we'll continue with the suspension as it stands. Um, so these are all issues of concern. All of them need to be um, looked at, and we will be doing so and coming back to folks. I, I'm, I cannot confirm which days. Um, I know it has been used. Yeah, each has been used, and I'm happy to answer that um, offline uh, when I can confirm it. Yeah, go ahead. Heidi, I just want to add a few things to that because I'm not sure if it got lost in the remarks. Um, we are also asking um, King County Public Health uh, to make sure that they are, if part of this review um, on all the tools that are used for crowd management, including the OC pepper spray. Also, unlike the use of tear gas, there is a, a, a department-wide policy with related to when OC spray can be used, what types can be used, how they're trained. When I was U.S. Attorney during the uh, Occupy movement, there was the indiscriminate use of uh, pepper spray nationwide, and it was the first letter we sent to the Seattle Police Department requesting that they review their use of it and develop better policies, procedures, and training. They did that. That was approved at that time. But again, we've got to continuously improve. And how we act in every individual contact between the Seattle Police Department and, and uh, residents or businesses is important, but it's also important how we manage large crowds. So it's one of the things we're asking the accountability partners with the, with the court monitor to review when they look at these crowd management uh, policies, procedures, techniques, and tools. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Chief Best. Our next question will come from Kevin Schofield, SEC Insight, followed by Erica Barnett, CS for Crank. Kevin, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, this is a question from the mayor. Uh, yesterday, the city uh, withdrew its motion to terminate a portion of the consent decree. Uh, when it withdrew that, it also withdrew the city's commitment to uh, an August 1st date for uh, delivering a plan for how the city is going to come into compliance on police accountability and disciplinary procedures. Is there a new target date for that? Is there a new plan for how you're going to finish up that work of uh, you know putting together the plan, or is there you know? Are you off on a new plan now? Thank you, Kevin, for that. And I, it might have been the day before yesterday. I, I've lost track of Dave's, too. Um, I've, I've talked to the city attorney and others. I think given all that we are seeing in the streets and where we are as a city and a country in the relationship between police officers and, and residents, uh, we need to take a hard look at everything and that we cannot rush that review. Um, we, we need to make sure that coming back to the court, we address not just the four areas the court had identified, but the many, many areas that I'm hearing from community every day, both in the, the voices they're raising on the street and the meetings I'm having. And so I look forward, I'm hoping to have a conversation with our accountability partners, the CPC, OPO, a, OPA, and OIG, as well as uh, other community stakeholders and the council to see what kind of process we can put in place to make sure that um, we go to the court not just with 
uh, those four areas, but I think we're seeing significant other areas, some that have been asked today and over this week. Um, crowd management tools and policies and procedures, the use of chokeholds and other things. We want to make sure that uh, we come back to the court with addressing all the concerns that communities raised or at least looking at those concerns. So there's no date yet I, and uh, I'm going to be looking to those accountability partners and the community to help set that because I think they're going to be vital to that process. Thank you, Mayor. Our next question will be from Erica Barnett, C is for Crank, followed by Deborah Horn, Cairo Center. Erica, the floor is yours. Um, Mayor Griffin, you have mentioned several times wanting to hear from the accountability partners in the community. Um, there's been, um, I mean, your own Office for Civil Rights director wrote a letter today calling, um, among many other things, for the use of, for the, the end of the use of these sort of militarized tactics. The CPC called for the same thing. Um, OPA called for the end of tear gas permanently. Why, why do we need this 30-day or longer process? And will you accept the recommendations when they do come out, um, even if you don't personally agree with them? So um, um, I think that's multiple questions. I'll see if I can parse what you want. The answer is they need to come back with recommendations, and ultimately it will be the federal court that decides. Um, I have no, no doubt about that, and I believe that if, if the national experts, community experts, and accountability partners working with the monitor come back with a unified voice, um, that the city will be in line with that. Um, I can't predict the future, but... Uh, based on the work that I did with the consent decree 10 years ago. That's the process we had in place. It worked very well. Uh, and I think that having this kind of safety valve in place to make sure that we aren't just static, but that we're showing that we improve. The other part of this that I think is really important for people to see and remember is this is a new and different role for OPA, for CPC, and for the Office of Inspector General. They are now t almost quasi taking over that role that the feder federal monitor provided before, and they are going to be the accountability partners on the long term that are going to give the community the confidence they need that there can be effective oversight of the Seattle Police Department. Thank you, Mayor. Our next and final question will come from Deborah Horn, Kyra Seven. Deborah, the floor is yours. To uh, Mayor and uh, Police Chief as well as Fire Chief, I wanted to ask one question. Maybe this question is for you, Mayor. You know, there was a lot of damage done, not only downtown, but also some damage on Capitol Hill and damage uh, in the international, uh, the Chinatown International District. And it happened to businesses that are small, that have been struggling during a very difficult time. What can the city, what is the city planning to do or thinking of doing to try to help those most businesses get back on their feet during this terrible, difficult time of COVID-19? Thank you for that question, Deborah, and you're absolutely right. Um, and we've been working across city departments to see how we can ha help those small businesses, Capitol Hill, downtown, and Chinatown or National District. Um, we have helped those communities uh, board up windows to protect from further damage. Uh, dozens and dozens of businesses. We're helping them remove graffiti, clean up the neighborhood, and my Office of Economic Development, together with Department of Neighborhoods, is looking at ways that we can support those businesses as we move to the next phase of reopening. These small businesses, particularly in Chinatown or National District, were already hanging on by a thread. Um, and Chinatown International, International District was the first area of the city hit by COVID-19, largely because of the wrongful uh, discrimination and stigmatization of the Asian community, and business dropped off precipitously. They've been struggling, and they're such a fragile but culturally important part of our city, so we're going to be working with them significantly to see what we can do to offset the impacts of not just the demonstrations in COVID-19, but how do we make sure that they stay um, and come back from this? Um, because many of those businesses, as you know, have been owned by generations, uh, but it has been a really difficult time for them. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to all of our question askers. That concludes the Q&A portion of today's press conference. I just want to thank everyone again for taking the time to be here. And I think the last two days have shown you can have very large protests and marches in different parts of the city and that they can be conducted in peace and without any confrontations with police. I'm thankful that the um, early morning hour uh, 
uh, when there was an incendiary device set off and it looked like a garbage can near the crowd. Uh, and that caused the crowd to believe that it was the police that did it and started throwing projectiles that the police did not respond or escalate and it quickly diminished. We're going to have to continue to find ways that the police department in these demonstrations can effectively communicate with the people who are demonstrating so they know they are safe to, to raise their voices and exercise their First Amendment rights. And at the same time, they are the first line of accountability to make sure that people don't take those protests and turn them into something that is very different. Um, we saw marches in different parts of the city yesterday. We saw parts of the crowd split off from Capitol Hill to march down to the Central District. Uh, we are seeing more and more people join these demonstrations. Uh, and they've remained peaceful. So I want to thank again the chief for every day trying to think of new ways to de-escalate their tactics to make sure that we are unflinching in our willingness to have accountability to look at the department and its techniques. Um, we, we have to regain the trust of the community. We know that and the only way that that is possible is if by interaction by interaction and if people have trust in those accountability systems. I want to thank the CPC, the OPA, and the OIG for so quickly um, doing their first initial review uh, at my request and the request of the council, coming back with their recommendations, and thank them for their ongoing work to make sure that our police department can be as accountable as possible to the people they serve. Thank you very much.